Folks, we're back in my Toowoomba studio where I'm going to have a lovely time teaching you how to design fabrics in the microwave oven. I call this technique instant fabrics in the microwave because they really are instant ways to get great results. Many years ago I started hearing about microwave techniques being done with dyes. And as we know, liquid radiance is not a dye, it's a paint that penetrates the fibre in the same way as a dye does. But I thought, well, okay, if you can do these things with dyes, why not do them with liquid radiance? Let's give it a go. So what we're going to do today started a long time ago for me. First up, I was excited, so I wanted to share the skills. We were doing it as a half hour workshop, uh, sorry, a half day workshop. Then it extended to a full day workshop. And now we do so many things, so many twists and turns to this topic that we do it as a, a two day workshop. If you are playing at those tables over there in my studio, yep, I would keep you going for two days and you would probably keep going beyond that. So we have lots and lots to explore. Again, I'm going to hit the tips of a lot of icebergs. And um, in my handbooks, And in Embellish Magazine, issue 37, it is still available through us and through the girls at Artwear Publications. Yep, you'll be able to pick up what I've written about the microwave techniques in there. But these are available forever. These are my own handbooks. Instant fabrics in the microwave is what it's all about. A way to really zing up the colours. When I was hearing about these techniques being done with dyes, it was really important and still is that you never use the same microwave for your food as you do for your dyes and you cannot use the same vessels for cooking your microwave dyed fabrics as you do for your food. Liquid radiance, as we know, is non-toxic and non-polluting. You can use the same microwave as you do for your food beauty. You can use the same cooking vessels as you do for your food. But I do prefer to have my own cooking vessels for my microwaving because I find a plastic vessel that is microwave safe, that's important. You don't want to be putting the toxins from your any old plastic vessel into your microwaves that you're ultimately going to be cooking food in. So so yeah, this is my favourite. It's a, uh, a, a lid for when you're cooking a, or heating a meal. And I love this one because you can actually see through it. But I do have other vessels that you'll see me talking about as well. What I'm going to do to you, for you today with you is just a couple of different techniques to give you the hang of this. What we've got to take into account is that a lot of the things we do without a microwave oven can be done in the microwave as well. But when you're working in the microwave, you need to know that everything you put into the microwave must also be microwave safe. Here's a chrysalis. Just a piece of fabric that's been bound up with string and then that'll be coloured. The string must be natural fibre string. If we're using corks, as we do for this one, the cork must be a natural cork, not a synthetic cork. So everything that you use in the microwave has to be microwave safe. That is so important. When you're drying things naturally, liquid radiance will become darker where the colours are exposed to the surface and everything that's enclosed in there will become lighter. So here's the chrysalis that's been dried naturally. When we cook in the microwave, that's is that is going to speed up the, the drying time. So the colours remain vibrant within all those folds. So it's a perfect technique when you want to do, where's my sandwich? when you want to do colours that are all the way through. In this sandwich technique, there's quite a lot of fabric folded in there. If I were to dry it naturally, it would be dark only on the outer side and on the edges, but by cooking it in the microwave, you 
and get those colours all the way through. And there's so many ways of putting the colours on differently too that get you so many different patterns. So a lot of that is explored in the instant fabrics in the microwave handbook. Let's do a few of those now. I'm going to start off with this pretty little one called a flower garden. When we first started playing around with all these techniques using liquid radiance, we had a lot of burnt fabrics, folks. Brown, smelly cut work. Isn't it nice of us that we got it right for you? <laughs> but now I'm going to teach you the rules so that you will get it right every time also. We're going to work with natural fibres. Working with cotton is what I'm going to do today, but my shirt is linen. Um, yeah, I've, I've worked with silk, but we cook that one differently, and that's covered in the handbook. What I'm going to consider is that it is going to take four to five minutes to cook a quarter metre of cotton fabric. And we're going to use that as our guide. And that guide will apply up to a half metre of fabric. We'll talk about what happens when we're cooking more than a half a metre later on. So if I've got half that quantity of fabric, it's going to be half that four to five minutes, or two to two and a half minutes. If it's going to be twice that amount, it's going to be eight to ten minutes. So you just basically work it out according to the size of your fabric. So we work out our total cooking time and I'm going to make that the total time. My blackboard skills have gone to pot since I was a teacher a long time ago, but I'm sure you can get the message here. Righto, that's the total time I've worked it out to be. We're not going to cook it straight through. When we're working on cottons, we've got to divide our timing up and look for things happening in it. The first cooking time is going to be half the total time. And we're going to observe some changes already. We will notice that our fabrics are way more intense in colour, much stronger, much brighter. I call that intensification. We're then going to cook for half the remaining time half rem time and that's cooking time too. We will see more and more intensification and what we then see is separation of the colours. Now this is an exciting concept. This is something that doesn't happen with other products I have found. When I'm talking about the separation I want to refer to my hot, hot pink linen shirt that I found in a $2 shop, second hand. I can't wear hot pink, but I can wear it as it is now. So I dunked it in, a 1 in 20 mix with black, and it was the ugliest looking thing. I concertinaed it, and you'll see me do that shortly cooked it in the microwave and what the, the heat and steam do is break that colour up into its patterns. So you can see the darks and the lights that were formed as the colours separated. You can see it also here on my display. Yeah, that was done all over even colour in bands originally concertinaed and then the colour separates. It forms its patterns. Okay, 
When we've got that far on our smaller bits of fabric, we then don't want to burn it. So we're going to sneak up on it a bit at a time and we could be breaking down this last remaining time into, well, I call them small chunks and we'll call this three to however many it takes. So it could be 15 seconds, it could be 20 seconds, it could be five seconds, depending what you're brave enough to do. And it really does boil down to that. However, I'm going to be teaching you how to feel it as well. Okay, so three to however many it takes. We're going to see more, uh, the intensification is going to settle down we'll get more and more separation but what we're going to start looking for now is the fabric drying and there are three letters in that word that are more important than the other three and that's the ing we do not want to cook until it's dry because that's when we do end up with brown smelly cut work. Ugh. Okay, so what we're going to start doing is feeling our fabric. For a while it will be moist when you take it out of the microwave. We're going to cook and cook and cook and we're going to stop when it feels clammy. You know the feeling with the kid's brow and you're about to rush them off to the doctors, that clammy feeling. Not moist, but clammy. Not dry either. There are your rules. So we're going to apply those now to our pieces of fabric. And I do have a little bundle of wet pieces here. Well, not too wet, they've been squeezed out. And we're going to first up do our flower garden that you see in front of me. But according to the colours you use, it could be a bushfire, it could be a piece of something like the forest floor. It could be oceanic, depending on the colours that you put in. Okay, in our introductory web workshops, we looked at scrunching our fabric up, but we did it when it was coloured and we got those amazing crystal patterns happening. We're going to actually scrunch this before we colour it. Could you colour it first and then scrunch it? Absolutely yes. Then cook it in the microwave. Absolutely yes. You'll get different things happening with whatever you do to it. So if we look at these two pieces of fabric here, same colours. One has been dried naturally, one has been cooked in the uh, uh, microwave. This one, more time to dry, about 24 hours. This one doesn't take long to dry and you see how those colours are really zinged up. The piece behind that is called fabric in a jar, it's done by a totally different method. That's for another time. Okie doke. So, We've scrunched up our fabric. We've tickled, 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 tickled until we've got our little hills and valleys. And now we're going to add our colours. I am using my favourite mix, which is the one quarter concentrate, three quarters water. And I might do a little Aussie wildflower piece. The fun bit of this is you never know what you're going to get. After a while you can sort of get used to it and think oh well if I get to try for violets I'll use certain colours, if I'm going to try for roses I'll get certain colours. Now when we do our fabrics without cooking them in the microwave we allow, allow gaps between the colours but this time I'm not going to because when we cook them the colours are going to dry really quickly so it maintains that colour within all those scrunches. It is still important that we don't go into enemy territory, we don't go into excess. So I'm not pouring the colour on, I'm just dab dab dabbing that around. 
and I'll be showing you a different way of getting the excess out anyway if you are a bit nervous about how much you put in there. Bit of orange. You can put in whatever colours you want. But note, not dropping them on from a great height, just dabbing them against the plastic covered board underneath. Or just a big sheet of plastic on your table surface if that's what you're doing. A big bit. Okay, we better put a bit of greenery in our garden. I'll have a bit of pinkery out there though. I like to make it look as if I've cut this out of a bigger piece of fabric. Dab, 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 dab bit of green. I'm trying not to put colour over colour. Trying to keep them separate. And if you're getting to know me through all these sessions, you'll know I can't go anywhere without a bit of lime in that, that yummy yellow with a tiny bit of green in it mix. Don't forget to head for the colour mixing guide so you can see how our nine colours can be made into anything you want. If you're not familiar with colour mixing or our liquid radiance colours. Okie dokie, that looks about right. I need to know that those colours have not uh, have um, gone well through that fabric. So the next thing I'm going to find is a plastic bag or a sheet of plastic that you can see through and I'm going to lean on it. There's colour on there. That's way too good to waste. So I've got another piece of fabric here that's going to become my all day mop up. Well, for the bits and pieces I do in this workshop anyway, which won't necessarily be all day. I'll dry off my plastic, ready to use it again. And let's feel this. Yeah, it's still a bit sloppy. We can pick up that excess moisture onto another piece of fabric, some silk, some cotton, anything that is absorbent. Or let's try something different. Let's try using it on paper. Liquid radiance is pH neutral. If you need acid free in your paper crafts, I'm using acid free paper. And we know then that the colours will also be acid free for your paper crafts projects and you get some amazing patterns by just blotting them up. Now that the excess is gone we are right to cook that fabric according to our rules. I'm going to slide that into my microwave dish Clean up my board, of course. Those colours are still wet. I'm colouring my other bit of fabric for my mop-up. I'll dry off my board, ready for next time. And let's now cook this in the microwave. Yes, the microwave in my studio is not only used for cooking fabrics, it's used for heating people's lunches at lunchtime as well. And I use the microwave in my kitchen. They're not the same power. Irrespective of the power of your microwave, we're going to use it on high. And we're going to be feeling what comes in the microwave and watching what's happening in our dish just as much as we are going to be thinking about the timing. So my little piece of fabric is about two minutes worth. I know that. My first cooking time is going to be one minute. It has gone in at a particular colour intensity. In a minute, literally, it's going to look a whole lot stronger. So pretty much we can say, move over carrots, 
or whatever else you're going to cook in your microwave. I need that vessel to cook something else now. I need to do some fabrics. And whether it's Corningware, Pyrex, whatever is microwave safe, you can use to cook your fabrics. I do have, though, my microwave safe plastic vessels that I like to use, and I've already mentioned that food cover, but I also have a couple of other plates and smaller vessels for um, working with my fabrics because when you're handling them all the time they're not going to be as hot on your fingers as something that is ceramic or pyrex. So what we can expect to be happening in here is that fabric's getting hot but those colours are now incredibly more intense than they were and it put them in. I'm not sure if you can see the steam coming off that. And if you were here in my studio and we were doing this together, I would blow on it so that it wouldn't be so hot for you to feel. What we're going to do is touch it with the backs of our fingers because that's the sensitive part. The pads of your fingers aren't nearly as sensitive. So touch it with the back of your hand. If it still feels moist, we're going to keep cooking. We've got the intensification. With this fellow, okay, so half a minute now. With this fellow, it's pretty tricky to see the separation. The separation is much easier to see when you're doing the concertina and pleated and twisted things, as we'll do next. But we'll have a go. We'll see if we can see it. So something that would normally take about 24 hours to dry is in this case going to be done in about two and a half minutes. Okay. A bit more intensification. Certainly still hot. There's a lot of steam coming off it. I blow on it, my glasses fog up, yeah, there's still steam coming off it. And I can see the separation in there, in those folds. It is trickier to see on this one, as I said, though. We're going to cook a little longer while I pass on a really good secret to you. I'm going to go 15 seconds with this one. It's a fairly open piece, so it's not going to take as long to cook as something that was really tightly bunched. I have discovered over time that when my glasses stop fogging up, <laughs> my fabric is done. Beauty. <laughs> okay. Oh, done already. Not fogging. Oh, still a little bit moist. Let's give it another 10, I think. But as a wise friend, friend once told me, it's best to err on the side of caution. You're better to open it up too soon than too late. Too late means it's going to be burned. Definitely clammy. Time to go. Da-da! And we have our pattern vibrant and bright through all those layers that we formed. But it is still quite moist when I open it up. And if we look at the vessel, there's a lot of moisture on the vessel. That's the steam coming out from the water in the colours. At this stage though, we don't know whether the colours are still moist. I would suspect they weren't because when I touched it with my fingers no colour came off but I'm not going to put it on my ironing board and iron it dry just in case there is still some active colour in there. I'm simply going to pop that on a board and let it dry here in the workshop now but if I were doing this and not continuing with another piece, I would pin it up onto one of my work cloths over there on my work table so that the air is getting at it from both sides. It dries faster that way too. Okay, let's dry that out. 
and see what we can get up to next. Oh, you will note that there has been a little burn on this uh, vessel at some time, at some stage. Can you see that? Can now. Mm-hmm. It is possible to still burn the fabric. Let's see what happens when we start pleating our fabrics. Again, I've got some damp cotton. I could do a neat pleat, a concertina pleat, and that's what you see on the two pieces in front of me. And I could add my colours systematically through that, or I could add them all over the place. If I do bands, I will have a different result from if I go all over the place. <laughs> okay. That's probably the easiest one to do. What I want to do is this more random one. And you don't have to scrunch with the grain of your fabric. You can do it with across the fabric with the on the bias. But I'm going to do it with the grain just because it's a bit easier for now. So that's a really random concertina. I'm just going to sit it on its edge and apply my colours through those folds. I could do bands of colour, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go randomly. We'll go a little bit of red. A little bit of orange. Why not? And a little bit of Genesis purple. Probably my favourite colour, seeing it's the colour we named for our business. But it's aubergine, an equal red-purple mix. Just head for the colour mixing guide to get these colours. Okay, I am trying to get that colour through my layers, but it will help me if I lean on it. Oh, that's not quite long enough. Right, let's blot that out and go diagonal. That'll fix it. Here we go. So squishing those colours through, this one's going to be really nice and random. And cleaning up my plastic as before. Let's flip that over and see what's happening underneath. A hmm, bit more. Here we go. If it wants a bit more, we'll give it a bit more. As we know, we'd like nice colour through all those layers. Does it matter if they don't meet up in the same places? For this one, no. <laughs> if we were doing the spiral t-shirt, it would. But for this one, let's just see what happens. But the surface of my fabric is covered. Moisture movement is going to be minimised when we cook. Give that a good old squish. And this time, I'm not going to get a really nice bit of paper if I wanted to blot onto that. Oh, unless I blotted it several times, because it's a bit skinny. But we can actually pick that one up and check it for excess. Yeah, it does feel sloppy in my fingers. Look, no gloves. You don't need gloves for this. Liquid radiance is non-toxic. It'll come out of your, off your skin with soap and water and a nail brush. Besides, I think gloves are clumsy things. Sometimes I wear them. Right, the excess is gone. But I've got plenty more to put into my all-day mop-up. And of course we're going to get a browniness from this one because we're using colours that are complementary, opposite sides of the colour circle. To cook this one, I'm just going to ease it out a bit and then pop it into my microwave dish. I'm not going to open it right out. We'll talk a bit more about that 
later. Come on, twist over. One more for me. There you go. I think you can see though, if you wanted to cut colour a big piece of fabric, you could fit lots in there by simply coiling it really, really closely. And that's how we can fit such big pieces into the microwave. And there's nothing wrong with using the tray in the microwave as well. It's a microwave safe tray, obviously. So yeah, you can coil your fabrics up onto that as well. You don't have to have a separate vessel. But anyway, I just want to open that out a bit. And we know the cooking time for this one. Half time is one minute. Half remaining time is 30 seconds. And then we'll sneak up on it. Let's go. So yes, if you do want to do a big piece of fabric, as is the back of the quilt I've got hanging up behind me here, it's a case of colouring it however you wish and then concertinaing it and spiralling it onto your microwave tray. We'll talk about the t-shirt later. My shirt would have taken, I don't know, probably about 20 minutes to cook. We cook it in stages rather than all at once and I break up the timing differently when I'm going to be doing bigger pieces of fabric. Here we go, stage one of our spiral. No, that's not a spiral, of our concertina. On a little piece like that, I can actually pick it up and flip it. Sometimes we flip our fabrics, sometimes we don't. I wouldn't have flipped it for the flower garden because I want that lovely strength of colour on top. So here we go for our 30 seconds now. And while that's doing its thing, let's talk about the two plate flip or the two board flip as I call it when we're doing garments uh, and using the plastic covered boards. You would spiral your fabric onto the plate or vessel. To do big pieces like this, a la the quilt back, after the first cook, you put another one on top and flip it. And continue cooking on the second plate. After the next lot of cooking, oh, and you wipe that one off. That one goes back on, flip it, and continue cooking. And so on as we go through our stages that I will talk about later. So a second plate or vessel that's the same um, is really handy when you're doing your big pieces of fabric. So what's going on here? I can blow on it, I'm still fogging up a little bit. I can touch it and it still feels moist. It needs to go to clammy. Okay, so let's go 20 seconds this time. Because it is closely worked together, it is going to take a little bit longer to cook than something that is more open, like the flower garden. Is it a good idea to put two pieces on the same, in the same vessel to cook at the same time? If they're the same fold or scrunch, yes, you can do that. But if they're different, I would not put a flower garden in with a concertina because <laughs> they're going to cook at different times and I may be burning one while the other one's still doing. And this is where it's just as important to have the touch right and use the timing as your guide. Okay, this one, still fogging up. I reckon we can go another 10 seconds with that. And as I mentioned before, it's best to err on the side of caution. This one too will feel more moist when I open it up, just like the flower garden did. Here we go. Da-da time. Your pattern will happen 
according to what you've done to it. Interesting things happen with these concertinas. That's still quite moist, I'll pop it aside to dry. Not so much on the random concertinas, but on the neat concertinas. Not only do you get the distinct stripes of light and dark colour, but when you look at these and look at the reverse side, where it's strong on one side is light on the reverse. Where it's light on one side is strong on the reverse. I've never figured out how that happens. I just know that it does and it just makes for amazingly great fabrics. These two fabrics in the middle, the two neatish ones, that wasn't neat neat, this was neat neat. Um, they've both been done with yellow, red and blue, your three primaries. But we have two totally different effects. The lighter one is a lighter weight fabric and a bit shiny and a bit more closely woven, whereas the darker one is a little bit more coarse. And so you get different things happening on different fabrics as well. The weight of the fabric will also determine your cooking time. So if you're working on something like a cotton batiste, it's not going to take nearly as long as a homespun. So take all that account into account when you're working out your times for cooking and use what you see and feel as your guide, your intensification, your separation and your drying, ing, not dry, as your guide. So in my microwave handbook, you're going to find all the bits and pieces I've just done with you and a whole lot more. How to use corks, how to, use, how to do plaits, how to do stitching, oh, and all sorts of folds and scrunches. So there's plenty in there to keep you out of mischief. What I'm going to do with you now, though, because it's a really popular one, is the spiral. And let's think back to the first introductory workshop session where I did a one colour colour colouring and then I did a spiral using the chicken dance. Mm -hmm. Wondering what on earth I'm talking about? Let's get a bit of revision. Okay, you're going to put your knuckles together with your elbows out. The easiest way to form a spiral is to get into the habit of both hands going in opposite directions. Okay, knuckles together and roll knuckles to wrists, knuckles to wrists, knuckles to wrists. That's the action that you want on your fabric. And in no time flat, it's da 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 You're doing the chicken dance, okay. So let's do the chicken dance on our fabric here. I'm going to find that little pointy bit that I need as the centre of my spiral. Doesn't have to be in the centre of your fabric. It can be wherever you want it to be. Okay. And I'm going to have one hand grabbing that little pointy bit. I'll keep dropping it as, as I work. And I tell you, this is much easier to do on a t-shirt than on a tiny bit of fabric. But one hand is picking up that pointy bit and um, turning it in one direction, while the other hand is combing in the opposite direction. Okay? Easy. On a little bit of fabric, not quite so easy, so I'm just going to tuck these all in now, getting as many hills and valleys, uppy downy bits as I can. When you want to do this on a one colour fabric, you, of course you colour it first and then colour it. But when you want multicolour, you spiral first and then colour it. So really you're looking at colouring methods and handling methods again, um, just as we do for all our other normal drying techniques. Just tuck that in. It is 100% cotton. It has to be. So it's going to sit quite nicely for me. I'll just press it now to give it the message that I want it to stay there while I do my rainbow spiral. You don't have to do a rainbow. You can do whatever colours you want. Now my rainbow spiral is going to start off with yellow. We'll then move into orange and then into red. 
I use more than just the colours of the rainbow in my spiral. Believe it or not, we're going to use nine there. Here, eleven, nine, nine. <laughs> Red, magenta, purple. Magenta and blue make purple, so that's the logical colour to go in there. Now it's blue. And then we're going to come into green, but I actually like to put some teal in there just to soften the blow between the two colours. And finally we're going to end up with lime, which is of course the yellow-green mix. Okay, just move those off a bit so you can see what I'm doing. Those colours are all nicely laid out for you, by the way, in the um, Garments Galore handbook where I'm showing you how to colour the T-shirt. Now, here we go. I love to start with yellow first because it really zings up and sets the pattern for, but we know yellow needs friends to bring it alive. When you apply your colours, we're going to do a comma stroke. The yellow has started on the pointy bit and gone as a comma stroke, or probably more like a comet because it's got a fat tail, across my fabric, not around and round in circles, okay? This is the way you get your true spiral. And so it's an arc across your fabric. That might help too. Can we see that? No, I'll bring it over here. Now you can. Orange is going to follow that same arc or comma or comet meeting up to it but not going on to the pointy bit that's important oh gosh i've got a drop of red where i didn't want it it will get disguised in the next color we hope Meeting up once again. It's going to have its mate magenta beside it, so I'm sure the magenta is going to be happy to share there. Magenta being the pink in our range, hot pink. It's printer's colour, that's why we call it magenta. If you have a printer, you'll be familiar with that. And then our purple. Dab, 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 dab. We're not dropping on from a great height ever when we're using liquid radiance. It's more like drawing, definitely not pouring. Blue. Teal is my colour that I use next. Now this is a blue-green mix and it's just one of my favourites. I've always made it. It's not on the colour mixing guide. It's um, just equal blue-green. There's all sorts of other mixes on there. Green is next. If you don't want to mix up a teal, Cyan does the job beautifully in there too. And we just have room to bring it all back to where it started with our lime. And I'll bet you know what I'm going to do next. I'm going to grab that plastic bag and make sure those colours are penetrating right through the layers. Pressing it down nice and firmly. Covering it with plastic means you're not going to smudge colours from area to area by moving your hand over it. And just as we did for our flower garden, I'm going to print some paper using 
the spiral as my printing pad. These are just amazing. I have been known to be so busy printing paper that I've sucked too much off my proper work though, so be warned, it can happen. Again, it's acid-free paper that I'm using and Liquid Radiance is also an acid-free or pH neutral product. Some printed paper, done. If I've smudged any color on there because I've been so busy printing, well, if we remember back to um, the first web workshop, we can rub that out and a blind man will be glad to see it. So now that's not sloppy anymore, we can get cooking. And while this one's cooking, I want to talk to you about the shirt that I had up there earlier. It's going to be the same cooking time. Half time is a minute. Half remaining time is half a minute and so on. When I was doing the shirt, I did the front first. That was okay, doesn't matter which you do first, front or back, but you're spiraling, spiraling both sides together, just as you've seen me do with a piece of fabric. To get your true spiral, you need to use that arc. You're not actually drawing the spiral as you see it on the shirt. You're doing that arc across your fabric, and you see that in the handbook and on my image here. So that's how that started. When it came time to do the back of this, and of course if you're doing a really thick thing, it is important to flip that over and do the reverse side. Doing it one way on the spiral, the first way, my head logically thinks that way, but when, I came, when it came to the back and I had to think in reverse, I found that really tricky. So I've found that you can still get a really good result if you divide your shirt up into pie wedges rather than an arc and yeah it's still a good result 100% cotton shirt pie wedges you don't quite get the twist the whole twist of the spiral but you will get a very happy result and a lot of happy kids if you do them the shirts with liquid radiance because they are so vibrant. For something like that, I would not use, oh, I've got to get this going. Righto, fogging over. I'm not going to flip this one because again, I want the pattern nice and vibrant on top. 30 seconds and back to talking about the shirt. You will waste a lot of liquid radiance color if you do this with your one quarter, three quarters mixes and a lot of time because it's going to take forever. I like to work with the, the bigger bottles. I like to work with a more diluted mix. So you can use up to about one in 10, one in 15 and still get good strong colour when you're working on a knit fabric because it really sucks the colour in. And you're not wasting the liquid radiance concentrate by using less water in those little bottles. What are we up to now? Yep, I'm still sort of fogging up. It still feels moist, but I think another 15 seconds and that will be done. Really important when you're doing something like the shirt that you use the two plate flip so that it's coloring it evenly front and back as that is. It's just about da da time for this one too. No fogging up. Yeah, it really is an advantage to wear glasses when you're doing something like this. And, oh, hot. Open it up. 
we know that it's still going to be really moist. We know that we're going to let it dry completely before we iron it. And using the spray stretch and iron, as I've talked about in previous programs, is definitely an advantage. And we have our perfect spiral. So folks, there is lots and lots of fun to be had when we're working with bigger pieces of fabric and doing them in the microwave. Bags are something I love to do in the microwave because it is so quick. These are really coarse calico bags. Brilliant to cook though. Let's have a look at some variations. A neat concertina, coloured in the same way, but just concertina differently. And we get two totally different results. This was the neat one that you saw me do, or that you didn't see me do, but I folded originally. This one was just scrunched up and coiled into my microwave vessel. I love to do my bags with a twist. This was colours all over the place and just the two purples, concertinaed and twisted and cooked. There's the result. Love working with blacks and browns on bags. And you can't see the dirt if they get dirty. And if they do get dirty, you just throw them in the washing machine. This one's been washed I don't know how many times already. So that was a almost a sort of neat concertina. And gently twisted, brown and black. Those lovely markings from the heat and the steam. The other brown and black one was more brown, a little bit of black. Totally different look. Totally different concertina totally different twist. See how many things you can get up to and how many results you can get. This is one of my favourites. It was black with a little bit of blue and a little bit of purple. And look what the microwave has done to it. Still get the dark and light stripes in reverse on front and back. Yep. They make the best wrapping presents, um, gift wraps. And your friends will love you for it because they don't have wrapping paper to throw out. So if you want something quick and easy to do, you really do get instant fabrics in the microwave. Just make sure you've got the rules right. Just make sure you know how to feel it, how to sense when it's dry. Leave it alone until it is totally dry before you iron it. And um, Happy microwaving, folks. I hope you have as much fun with it as I do. Remember also that I'm always at the end of the phone, um, at the end of an email to answer any questions, and uh, just check into my web workshops as well because we're doing all these things and a whole lot more where we can actually get to see each other via Zoom. Have fun. Happy creating.